All right, so in this video, we're gonna go over the load function, which runs before the page is created on both the client and the server. So you can fetch and manipulate data before actually rendering the page, meaning you don't need to show a loading indicator. Let me show you how to use it. So back in our name.svelte file, we're fetching data from our endpoint. Since the endpoint has the same file name as our page, this page receives the data returned from the endpoint directly as props. But what if we were to change our endpoint's name to handle.json.js? Now we notice in the browser, we no longer receive our data from the endpoint. This endpoint is no longer a page endpoint. It's now a standalone endpoint. So what we should do instead is fetch our data using the load function. Now, in order to use the load function, the first thing we need to do is add a script tag with module context. Anything defined on the module scope will be evaluated only once when the module first evaluates rather than for each component instance. Now, from this script tag, we can export the load function like this. Load gives us a bunch of arguments that will help us fetch data. In this example, we'll want access to this params object, which contains any dynamic params that were a part of our request, and also a fetch function, which makes it easy to actually fetch our data in both the client and server. Now, since the load function is reactive, it will rerun any time one of its parameters changes if that param is being used in the function. So in this example, since we're using params, our load function will rerun anytime our dynamic param name changes. It's also important to use the SvelteKit provided fetch wrapper rather than using the native fetch within our load function to avoid issues that may occur when calling fetch on the server. Now we can use our dynamic param name to fetch the appropriate data from our endpoint like this. But the load function must return something. We can return a props object, which is an object that will pass data from the module script to the component as properties. So in this example, I'll simply return our product data like this. Now our load function is returning the data fetched from our endpoint, but the page still isn't loading. Since we change our endpoint's dynamic param from name to handle, we'll have to update this in our endpoint. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now we see our product data is successfully being returned and displayed on our page. So all the code within our load function will run on both the client and server before the component is created and will now have product available to us in our component as a prop. If you watched my previous video on components, you may remember that in order to access props in a component, we need to export that prop to make it available for assignment. So it's important to remember to export our prop below our script with module context in our normal script tag, which in this case we were already doing from the previous video. It's also important to point out that the load function will run any time a parameter being used within it changes. This means if our product name changes, load will run again before remounting the component. So let's change our product name in the route and we see our data updates. Now let's dive into how exactly this function works. This load function will be called before the component is created and it will fetch our product list data from slash product slash shirt dot JSON, which is our endpoint. When we initially request this page from the server, all of this code in the load function is run on the server where it renders the HTML in our data, but the code also runs on the client. To prove this, let's log our product in the console. If we refresh our page, we see product is being logged in the browser's console, and this is because the code is running in the client. However, if we take a look in our terminal, we see that product is also being logged here. That's because the load function is being run on the server as well. Now, what's interesting is if we go to a different route and click back to slash product slash shirt, we see product is once again being logged in our browser's console, but not in the terminal. So why is this? To best explain what's happening, let's take a look at a diagram. When the page initially loads, the client requests slash product slash shirt from the server, and the server then calls load, which fetches slash product slash shirt.json from the endpoint. However, the data does not need to be served from your app. It can just as easily be fetched from an external API. The server then uses the return data to render the HTML. In this particular example, the load function is calling fetch. It's important to note that if you call fetch in load, the resulting data is inlined into the HTML. When the browser hydrates the HTML, load is immediately called again, this time from the browser. However, this time fetch won't hit the network because it reads the inline data instead. Only calling fetch once guarantees consistency between server and client and is a more efficient use of bandwidth. So this explains why we see products being logged in both the browser and terminal when we refresh the page, because it's getting called twice, once on the server and once on the client. 
But you may be wondering why call it twice? Why not just call it once and serialize the output of load? By calling load on both sides, we're not restricted as to what we can load. So for example, you can conditionally load different components even though they couldn't be serialized. So now we have a decent understanding of how a load works when we first load the page. But if you remember, on subsequent page loads, we only see products being logged in our browser's console. It's no longer logged in the terminal. So why is this happening? Shouldn't load be getting called twice, once on the client and on the server? Well, after the initial page load, any subsequent page loads will call load directly from the client. And this time, any fetch calls will hit the network as depicted in this diagram. Now is also a good time to point out that load is very different than one of Svelte's lifecycle functions on mount. Every component has a lifecycle that starts when it's created and ends when it's destroyed. Load will run before the component is rendered to the DOM, and the component will not be rendered until we receive a response from load. This means that we do not need to display any sort of loading indicator. On mount is different because it runs as soon as the component is mounted to the DOM. This means a user will see the component before we receive a response from on mount. So load should typically be used when you're fetching data, but there are use cases where you may need to use on mount over load. So it's important to understand the difference. So in our example, we use load to fetch the product data. Now, what if we want to display a modal component that alerts that the item is on sale, but only after the user has been on the page for five seconds? We can do this using the on mount function. I've already added our modal component to this page, which is being displayed if show modal is true, which right now it's set to false. And the first thing we need to do is import on mount from Svelte like this. Now let's create a new variable seconds, which will start off as zero. And in our on mount function, we'll set an interval that will increment seconds by one every second. Within this interval, let's set show modal to true if seconds is five. And I'll also log the value of seconds up here. Now, if we refresh the page, we see that every second our seconds variable is increased by one. And once it hits five, we see our modal. Now we should also clear our interval once the modal appears, as well as when the component is unmounted. We can do this by returning a function like this. Anytime a function is returned from on mount, it will be called when the component is unmounted. So to visualize this, let's log the string unmounted. Now if we test this again, we see that our interval is cleared once our modal pops up, as well as when our component is unmounted. So if we click out to a different page, we see unmounted is being logged. It's also worth mentioning that unlike the load function, on mount can be used in all components, not just pages. Now that we know how to load data into our page using the load function, let's learn how to prefetch it to make our app extra snappy. I'll see you in the next video.